Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to discuss cell voltages under non-standard conditions. Today's essential question, how do non-standard conditions change cell voltages? Standard reduction potentials. To calculate cell potentials using the standard reduction potentials table, the galvanic cell reactants and products must be in their standard state. So what is the standard state? The solution concentrations must be one molar. The pressure must be one ATM. The temperature is going to be 25 degrees Celsius or 298 K. So those are the standard conditions. Um, and it's only under those conditions that we can use the standard reduction potentials table to calculate cell voltages. When conditions are not standard, so the concentrations are not one molar, the pressure is not a, in one ATM and or the temperature is not 25 degrees Celsius. So when conditions are not standard, you're going to get different voltages from those predicted on the standard reduction potentials table. Qualitative analysis of galvanic cells with non-standard solution concentrations. Okay, so when I say qualitative analysis, what we're talking about is figuring out how a change in concentration would affect the reaction. For example, there would be a greater reaction or a lesser reaction, not sp the specific voltage of each cell, but how that voltage would change qualitatively, meaning greater or lesser than standard. Calculating the reaction quotient, Q, will allow for predictions. So here we're talking about predictions, not actual calculated voltages. So calculating the reaction quotient, Q, will allow for predictions about the changes in the movement of the electrons through the non-standard galvanic cells. All right, a quick review on Q. Um, let's start by looking at the reaction here. So we have the reactants A plus B producing the products C plus D. And the lowercase levels are the amount of each type of reactant or product. Okay, so Q equals the products, the multiplication or the, the product of the products. So the product C to the C, meaning how many C's we have, um, times the product D to the number of moles of D, divided by the product of the reactants or the concentration of A to the A, meaning how many A's, times the concentration of the of the reactant B to the B. Okay, so that is how you calculate Q. So what does Q tell us? The concentrations of the aqueous solutions are used to calculate Q. Remember that reactants and products that are solids or liquids are not included in Q. So we're only talking basically about aqueous and it could also be partial pressures uh, but we won't be dealing with that for this particular lecture. Okay, and now that we know how to calculate Q, when we get the, the answer for Q, what, what, does, what does that mean? So how do we interpret cell voltage using the value of Q? Well, if Q equals exactly one, then the potential difference between the two half cells causes the electrons to flow from one cell to the other. And the cell voltage will be the same as the standard value. If Q is less than one, then you're going to end up with a relatively large concentration of reactants, which will increase the driving force of the reaction and the cell voltage will be greater than standard value. So here, this will hopefully help you understand what I mean by a qualitative analysis. I calculate Q, and if it's less than one, I'm going to say that the cell voltage is going to be greater than what we see on the standard reaction potential table. 
Okay, we don't know how much greater, we just know that it will be greater than. And if Q is greater than one, we're gonna have a relatively small concentration of reactants, which will lead to a lesser driving force for the reaction to occur, and the cell voltage will be less than the standard value. So that is how we can use Q to quantitatively, no, sorry, to qualitatively predict how a change in solution will change the cell voltage. Okay, now let's talk about a quantitative analysis of, analysis of galvanic cells with non-standard solution concentrations. So quantitative meaning we can get an actual number. So how do we mathematically calculate the voltage of cells that have non-standard solution concentrations, meaning not one molar? So the actual voltage of a non-standard cell can be calculated using what we call the Nernst equation. Problem with this equation is that it is not on the AP chemistry reference table. All right, so here is the Nernst equation. Um, so what do all of these letters mean? Um, this is the form of the Nernst equation that is going to be used if the temperature and concentrations are non-standard. So R is the gas constant, 8.314 um, per joule Kelvin mole. Temperature is the temperature in Kelvin. N is the number of moles of electrons transferred. E is the standard voltage. Q is the reaction quotient. A second form of the Nernst equation is this one here. Um, and this is the one we will be using for, for today. Um, and this form is the Nernst equation used if only the concentration is non-standard. And what we did here is we, let's go back to the original one, we calculated the R, the T, and Faraday's constant to get the new Nernst equation. All right, so with this equation, if we actually plug in all the numbers, what we'll find is that when Q is greater than one, the math tells us that the log of Q is a positive number. This means we are subtracting a term from the standard voltage, resulting in a voltage smaller than under standard conditions. So the math will give us the same um, prediction that a Q greater than one will lead to a smaller voltage than standard. When Q is less than one, the math says that the log of Q is a negative number. This means that we're gonna end up adding a term to the standard voltage, resulting in a voltage larger than under standard conditions. And when Q equals one, the math tells us that the log of Q is zero. This means that we are neither subtracting or adding a term from the standard voltage, resulting in a voltage that is standard. Okay, let's try to do a problem um, calculating voltage under non-standard conditions. So the question is, if we have a reaction, solid zinc plus copper two in the aqueous state, producing solid copper plus zinc two in the aqueous state, and so if this is carried out using solutions that are five molar zinc, non-standard, and 0.3 molar copper, non-standard, at 298K, standard temperature, predict the effect on the voltage of the cell when compared to the voltage generated under standard conditions. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Um, first, because... Our, our um, concentrations are non-standard, but our temperature is standard, we can use the form of the Nernst equation, E cell equals 
standard reduction potential minus 0 0.0592 divided by the number of electrons transferred times log of the reaction quotient. So let's see, we need to figure out a whole lot of stuff. Um, we can start by figuring out Q. We remember that Q is the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. So to do that, we should probably write and balance our half cells. So we have being oxidized zinc solid going to Zn2 plus aqueous plus two electrons. And being reduced, we have Cu2 plus aqueous going to copper solid, and we're going to need two electrons on this side. And from there, they're balanced. So to figure out Q, we can just write in our concentrations. So let's see, our product concentration is copper. No, not true. Zinc is going to be our product, zinc 2 plus, and zinc 2 plus is 5.0 molar. And our reactant is copper, which is 0 0.3 molar. And that gets, gives us a Q of 16.7 molar. Okay, now at this point, we could make a qualitative prediction on the change in voltage under non-standard conditions. So let's go back and look in Q real quick and figure out what our prediction is. We had a Q of 16.7, which is greater than one, so our our cell, actual cell voltage will probably end up being less than the standard value. Not probably, it will end up being less than the standard value. All right, so now let's go back and finish actual calculations. Okay, let's make a list of the variables we have. So we'll start, we have Q now. We know our Q is 16.7. Um, we need to figure out N. Let's go back to our list and let me neaten this up a little bit. So N is the number of electrons transferred or the mole of electrons transferred and that's two electrons. So our N equals two. We need to figure out our reduction potentials, E. So we'll use our standard reduction potential table for that. So starting with the oxidation portion of the reaction, we'll be looking for Zn going to Zn2+, which we have right here. So under standard conditions, that portion would be negative 0.76 volts. So negative 0.76 volts. And then looking at our reduction half, copper two going to copper, we have um, positive 0.34 volts. So positive 0.34 volts. All right, so to calculate E cell, it's going to be 
the potential at the cathode minus the potential at the anode, which equals the cathode, which is the reduction half, 0.34 volts minus the anode, which is 0.76 volts. Oops, forgot the volts part. Giving us a reduction potential of um, 1.1 volts. So let's put that in our list. 1.1 volts. All right, so now let's plug this all in to our Nernst equation. We're going to have E cell equals 1.1 volts minus 0 0.0592 divided by n, which is 2, times the log of 16.7. And that'll give us 1.1 minus 0 0.036, giving us 1.06, which is less than the standard conditions would suggest, which is actually what we predicted just looking at Q. All right, so there you go. That's it for today. Have a good one.